Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by my colleague Nate Tracy, who will be talking to us today about searching vector data in Global Mapper. All right, Nate, take it away. Thank you, Rachel. Um, when you're working with a lot of vector data, whether that's for analysis uh, or for editing, the ability to automatically search is going to be really essential. Uh, and in Global Mapper, there are several different options available you, to you uh, to automatically search vector data, uh, whether that's by an attribute query or by uh, spatial and geographic relationships. So we've got two layers here in our workspace. Um, one uh, is a shape file showing the major roads here in the state of Maine, uh, and another showing the townships of Maine by their uh, boundaries. Uh, a famous uh, road to travel on here in Maine, especially in the summertime, is the Coastal Route, also known as US Highway 1. Um, so if you were planning a road trip, for example, maybe you would want to get a better sense of just exactly where that road goes. So we're going to pull up our attribute editor here and dock that, and then go over here to the Search Vector Data tool. Uh, we're going to make a query here where we search the full name of the road and load those values in. Uh, we've got quite a, a few roads to choose from here, but since we've loaded them in, we can just scroll until we find US Highway 1 and uh, validate that query and go ahead and click search. Um, those are going to now show up in our attribute editor, but we use the select all tool right here to select uh, all of the roads that match that search criteria. Um, we're just going to copy and paste those into a new layer. Go ahead and call that US Highway 1. Um, and now here in the workspace, we can see we've got a new layer uh, of just those roads that had the name US Highway 1 in our search query. Um, maybe we also want to know which towns in Maine um, US Highway 1 uh, is going to pass through if we decide to drive it end to end. So for that, we'll use a spatial operation. Um, we're going to use a predicate here. Uh, it gives you the option to create a new layer, but in this case, we're just going to create a selection. So we just want to make sure we select as our input uh, the Towns layer and the uh, Highway 1. And then we're just going to go ahead and click Run. And that's going to very quickly select all of the area features, the Towns in Maine, uh, that the US Highway 1 line feature intersects with. And then again, we can go ahead and copy and paste that into a new layer if we want to. We'll just call that the Highway 1 Towns. So now if we are uh, deciding to drive Highway 1 end to end, we'll know exactly which towns in the state uh, we're going to be passing through. Maybe along the way on your road trip, uh, you'd like to stop and see some state parks. Uh, we've got quite a few here to offer. And you, as you can see, many of them are right by the road. Um, so we can use uh, some distance automatic searching. Uh, so maybe, well, we'll start by uh, first creating using some advanced feature creation to create centroids uh, at the center of each of these parks. Some of them, as you can see, are quite large. Um, but this tool works uh, by searching the distance between uh, point features and selected line features. So we'll just add those to the existing uh, state parks layer. And now you can see that they're selected in the workspace. Um, and so now what we're going to want to do is uh, select the Highway 1 layer. And now we're going to use uh, some advanced uh, selection options here, uh, which is called to select point features near selected line features. Uh, you can enter your specify the distance. So maybe you're a little pressed for time and you don't want to have to travel more than five miles uh, to get to the park. You go ahead and select that, and it's going to tell you exactly uh, which points fall within that search distance. Uh, you can use the feature info tool, and you'll see that they have all the exact same attribute information uh, as the original area features they were derived from. Uh, one final thing to note uh, is that this is really important for uh, editing, for example, is that you know we automated the copying and pasting uh, of all the lines called Highway 1. Um, but sometimes you know they can get a little lost uh, if they were coterminous with another road that had a different name. So we can instead find uh, unconnected endpoints uh, and determine where there might be some points of uh, disjunction in this line feature. And Global Mapper is just going to go ahead and circle those. So here we can zoom in and see uh, that we've got two unconnected nodes here in this line feature. Uh, we can turn on the original road layer and see that there was a road there, but it just wasn't copied when we did the search. 
Um, so really quickly, we can use our digitizer to uh, just basically reconnect those vertices, uh, do some manual editing with the help of the automatic uh, search functionality. Now those uh, vertices do line up, so we can, again, select the line feature and run the same command again to find those non-connected endpoints. Uh, and as you can see now, those little circles indicating where that disjoint were have disappeared in that particular location. Nate, thank you so much for showing us how to do that in Global Mapper 23.1. I know that our users will find it very useful in their day-to-day -day workflows. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit our website today. And as always, thank you for joining us for this episode, and we hope that we'll see you next time.